Welcome back friends, it's Anders. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make the 12 mile limit, which is a prohibition cocktail that dates back to prohibition. It's one that is not really known, but it's really interesting. It has rum, brandy, and rye whiskey, which are all boozy things. It's amazing. It's dangerous, so fairly warned, and I will tell you why it's called the 12 mile limit. Seems like kind of a strange name, but it's actually quite clever. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make the 12 mile limit. To the bar, solid gold. Tommy Millard is credited for this cocktail back during the time of prohibition. It's named after the 12 mile limit which was a nautical border 12 miles offshore that the US set as just a boundary that beyond this, you could drink alcohol, but on this side of the border, it's illegal. But it wasn't always set at 12 miles. Originally, it was three miles. So there is a drink called the three mile limit as well, but this one's better, so that's why we're doing this one. The reason why it was set at three miles is, well, allegedly, that's how far a cannon could shoot. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never shot a cannon. I don't know, that just seems like a long ways. Three miles, three miles, think about that. That's a long way to shoot a cannon. Anyway, it was set at three miles. And what would happen is uh, rum runners, most notably a man by the name of William McCoy, would bring his rum just shy of the three mile limit. And there he would transfer it to smaller fishing boats. And then they could just hide in little coves where they could transfer it to trucks on the mainland. And in response, the US government pushed that line back to 12 miles because the idea was to deter these fishing boats from approaching the boundary. So there was the 12 mile limit. As you can imagine at this time, the cruise line industry was booming. Oh, also, a little side note, little trivia bit. Some people say William S. McCoy is the reason we have the term the real McCoy, though there are numerous theories. He was highly regarded within the trade as a man who did not water down his rum. And as you can imagine, during prohibition in the United States, there wasn't a whole lot of quality control. So if you were to get booze in the US, it probably was pretty terrible, unless you were lucky enough to get the real McCoy. Tools, it's gonna be shaken. So I've got my Boston shaker, Jigger, fine mesh strainer, Hawthorne strainer, and a peeler because we're gonna do a little lemon zest on top. And I've got these little sticks because I'm just gonna put the lemon zest on top. You don't have to. I'm just doing it as a little, little bonus. All right. Okay, we are gonna need rum, rye whiskey, brandy, fresh lemon juice, and grenadine. The rum I'm using is El Dorado three year. The rye whiskey is Rittenhouse 100 proof rye and the brandy is Maison Rouge VSOP, cognac. Cognac is actually a brandy. The rum I'm using is a really nice white rum. It's got a little sweetness, it's a little creamy, it's really good. And I'm gonna use twice as much rum as I am rye whiskey and cognac. So I don't want a really strong flavored rum. You could if you wanted to, but I don't wanna cover up the flavors of the rye and the cognac. As far as the rye, this is just my go-to mixing rye. And this is also my go-to mixing cognac. Uh, lemon juice, freshly squeezed, and the grenadine. The grenadine is actually very important. I'm using my homemade grenadine. It's just nice, bright pomegranate. I have a little rose water in it. It's very good. But whatever grenadine you like, let's build. I just wanna say I'm really happy because this is the first time in a long time I haven't pulled out some random bottle of booze that you might not have at home. I think most people are gonna have these bottles. So it's really simple. And I hope that you make this with me. I'm gonna start with the rum. Oh. <laughs> Get your glassware chilling. This is gonna be served up. I'm serving it in a little footed rocks glass. One ounce of rum. Then we're gonna go half an ounce of rye whiskey. Another half an ounce of the cognac or brandy. Half an ounce of lemon juice. And half an ounce of your grenadine. Pretty simple. One ounce of rum, half ounce of everything else. Now we can add ice and shake. Whew. 
chilly hands. Grab your chilled glassware and then double strain right into the cocktail glass. Then I'm going to take a swath of lemon, express the oils right across the top, get the sides. Now you can just discard this if you want, but I'm gonna put it on. The 12 mile limit. Cheers. Mm. This, this is wonderful. <laughs> the grenadine, the grenadine to me is what really makes this drink. It's only half an ounce, but use a good grenadine. And depending on the grenadine, you might get a completely different color. I've seen this drink bright red before. As you can see, mine is, God, what color is that? It's like the color of pinto beans. <laughs> you have to think about what it is you're drinking. The rye doesn't really come out strong. The cognac doesn't come out strong, even the rum. You can break it up once you like take a sip and think about it. You get that nice wood from the rye, a little spice, and the fruitiness of the cognac, which kind of blends in with the grenadine. Us? Yes, please. Mm. Oh man, that's right? crazy good. So incredibly easy to drink. Yeah. It's so good. I actually woke up in the middle of the night and thought, we're doing a 12 mile limit. That's a true story. I was gonna do a different cocktail. <laughs> And I was freaking out. I'm like, what do these people want? <laughs> Don't drink and use power tools. It's telling you the bar is this way. Like, subscribe, see you next week. Thanks for watching.